We were re reconstructing a street, and there was some uh, sprinkler systems in the parkway, and they got damaged, and we just passed an ordinance so we wouldn't open up ourselves to uh, all kinds of uh, payments for personal property or whatnot. Are we going to open ourselves up again like we did with the sprinkler systems? Well, sprinkler lawn irrigation systems are required to get a permit before they're installed. Part of that permit process is that they sign a license agreement with the city manager. That's because we just... If a sprinkler system it. or an irrigation system is put in without a permit and without the agreement, I can't see how the city would be held liable to replace any sprinkler heads or piping. But that's due to the... I think we just passed that ordinance like four or five months ago because we were having a problem on one of the streets where we, the city ended up paying for those sprinkler systems. That may be, but... I, you know, again, if those sprinklers, the, the ordinance requiring uh, permits for irrigation systems and license agreement has been on the book for several years. And if somebody does put an irrigation system in that is subsequently damaged by work that the city's doing on the parkway, it's, uh, again, we would probably have to refer it to the city attorney, but it would be hard to say why the city at that point would be responsible to, to, to uh, repair that system. I'm going to call on Alderman Shockey next, I think, then Alderman Wesley. But really quick, let me just give my opinion of that. It's This is an ordinance about parkway trees, and specifically this paragraph talks about the, the sewer line. So I think this is, this is direct enough that this doesn't, I don't think this doesn't open us up for any other liability for anything other than parkway tree roots and, and, and uh, residential sewers. Alderman Shockey. You're talking about sleeving or moving the private pipe to the sewer? I'm talking about sleeving it, yeah. Uh, number one, I, there are some areas that would be awfully difficult that there's no access to it. Uh, number two, if I remember correctly, I think you told me the tree's roots are as big as the tree itself, if not larger. So if you're talking about a tree obstructing a private line going to the sewer, that line could be obstructed 30 feet back from the street. And you're talking about sleeving the whole thing all the way to the house, basically. Pretty much. That would be the only right way to do it. You have to sleeve it from the house to the sewer tap. Wow. Thank you. Alderman Wesley. My question on that, again, let's go back to that. If you go ahead and sleeve it, are we going to require a resident if he hires a private plumbing outfit that comes out and find out that's a city's uh, tree? Are we going to tell them that they got to come before they repair it or allow a plumber to repair? We got to get three quotes or wait for staff to come out and, and approve it if they only have one washroom? I mean, there's some options. I mean, there is a major concern here because, you know what, it, it buckles sidewalks and we, you know, I just don't see where we're going with that. That's my concern is if we start saying that we are going to start paying for the residents' lines, if the city's trees in line, you're going to require them to come in. You're going to say, no, I don't like that proposal price that you got from this plumber. I want another price. And you're going to delay it. Well, I, I, see your, I see your point. I really do. But I really think time we get through that Mickey Mouse and, and you know, staff gets out there, look at it and, and all that, I say just, I hate to say it, remove the parkway tree. I mean, that's that's my concern here. I mean, we're going to delay a, a resin that's, the tree is, it's a parkway tree, it's interfering with their plumbing line, and it's on our property. I don't think it should go that way, but. No, I, I see your point, and that's why I bring it up as a question of the council as a whole, but I would tell you logistically, I think we're thinking about this the wrong way. I don't think the private property owner would be hiring and contracting out the work. I mean, it would be it would be the city's responsible both financially and and scheduling wise. That once again, that would be that would be part of it. Just like just like the private property owner would not be contracting the removal of the tree. The city would be doing that. It's you know, spending spending staff's time just doing something different than we're used to doing. That's all I'm asking we either consider or don't. I mean whatever it is, it is. So it's not, it's, it, I'm not, I'm not trying to get into arguments or debates with, with homeowners. There's pretty clear, easy ways to find out if their problem is our, is our parkway tree. So, um, all right, but it's food for thought guys. This is it. Uh, the next 
uh, paragraph, uh, Parkway Tree shall not be removed to facilitate development or redevelopment of properties unless it is demonstrated that failure to remove said trees results in an extraordinary burden on the developer. This language sounds a lot like uh, ZBA language. And um, the, um, the Streetscape Committee is called the Streetscape and Tree Committee. I mean, I wonder if we should start taking a heavier role uh, in being a tree committee, particularly since I think that committee exists in part to maintain our Tree City USA status. If we might, uh, if we might create a hearing process, I don't know that this would be that common, but that might be the proper route to take. Just at, once again, just asking if anybody here thinks that that might be an appropriate way to go about this once again, so staff isn't making a decision that council might not like. Um, Trying to, you know, trying to keep it clean and, and your direction uh, very clear. Um, if the tree committee makes a recommendation, it may have to come, you know, to council for a final, or it might just stop there. That might be appropriate. I don't know how the pieces come together. I'm just asking if we'd want to consider it. Um, page eight, section six point seven one zero, penalty. Uh, the maximum fine for uh, removing uh, illegally removing a parkway tree. Uh, maximum fine of $5,000. I think that's okay. This thing goes into the cost approach of how the tree is valued. The only thing I would like to add to that is a um, $1,000 minimum. I mean, let's let's make it so that it, it hurts if somebody does what they're not supposed to do. Um, you know, that's, you know, you could, you could start out at $50 for a small tree. You could start out at $150 for a larger one, but I'd, I'd like to push really hard for, for a, a fairly hefty starter fine. Once again, it's the city's property, it's the city's tree. Um, I think we could, we could publish this ordinance if and when it is in fact enacted and, and we could make it public record so you know, people can't claim ignorance, it's, it's out there. Um, once again, just asking for an opinion. If, if, uh, if, if there's a consensus to, to keep that minimum a little hefty, I'd sure like to see it. Um, it also begins, the next paragraph talks about uh, replacement parkway trees shall be planted. That too should, in my opinion, be the cost of, of the individual or the, om the homeowner or the property owner or the developer who may have illegally cut it down. Once again, not that they would plant their own tree. Planting parkway trees should only be allowed to be done by city staff or under the direction of city staff, but that cost should be recouped from and separately from the fine of the individual or entity who did that. Uh, and then Christine uh, Winger uh, actually reminded me of something that I did want to talk about. An inherent uh, question to, or a question to the inherent uh, ordinance as it's drafted. I even began to talk about the Dutch elm disease and the emerald ash borer on private property. But the scope of the application of this ordinance states, um, this article shall apply to all trees, shrubs, bushes, and other plantings located on all public right-of-ways, city property, or other properties under direct control of the city. Now, are we saying that diseased trees on private property are under the direct control of the city? Um, I would like to say that that should be the case, but I want to know that that's actually where we're going with this. And is this the right place to include the private property tree maintenance issues. But tree maintenance separately from, from disease tree issues, but disease needs to be addressed somewhere on the municipal level. I'm asking if this is the right place and the way this is drafted, was that the intent by staff and the reviewing attorney? As far as Private property, we have brought it up as a staff, and I know we're questioning the legalities of it as far as staff being able to more than step onto a piece of private property and look to see if a diseased tree is possible. Um, I know that's been questioned, especially with the Emerald Ash Borer discussion of late. Um, staff has brought to my attention, and we've been discussing options as far as how can we investigate knowing that we have ash trees, primarily green ash trees, um, within the city and can we inspect them and we do have a certified arborist on staff that we have uh, used to consult on a couple issues where we are in question with those trees so we are working on that currently. 
Okay. There, there are attorneys that, I don't know if they specialize, but they deal with a lot of tree, private, public property issues. I sat in a seminar uh, several months back, and most of the attorney presenters actually came out of California. Um, but they're kind of scattered throughout the country. There is precedent for this. I don't know how much in the state of Illinois, but there is precedent for what could be considered a nuisance tree, uh, particularly one that poses the potential for a widespread problem such as the spreading of disease and ultimately on a larger scale the potential decimation of an entire species, almost like what happened to the elms. So I think there may be precedent. I think that might be something that either staff or we may have to direct our attorney to, to begin to find, but I don't think we have to invent the wheel here. I think something's already out there. Okay. Alderman Wesley. Section 6.604, Amber Ash Board. The question here is you said to remove it on premises and just get rid of it. That was your statement. It is my okay. statement. My question to you, if we do get invaded by it, you cannot remove it out. You can remove it from the site, but you cannot remove it out of your town and you have to quarantine it in a certain area until the state comes out and to confirm that. So to spread it all over, to ship it somewhere else, you cannot do that. That came from the tree city when we had that lecture, that you have to quarantine this product. I don't think that should be in there. Well, we could put it in there, but the problem is Amber Ash needs to be quarantined until they come out and approve it, and it has to be shipped to a site that they feel fit, and it has to be uh, shred bark and all that other stuff. So this amber and ash, you might have to go a different direction with it, because that was from the Tree City Conference. Mr. Mermis? Yeah, I'm not sure if, if I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm not sure if that was the intent of uh, Alderman Cadala's argument, I think he was stating that if the resident wanted to keep some of the, you know, the wood chips or things like that on the property, that that wouldn't be allowed, not the immediate removal of the emerald ash borer. We'd have to, of course, follow the guidelines on that. Is that, that. That was my intent. Get it off the private property and away from other private property trees that may not have the disease yet or might never get it. Okay, Mike. Get, the, the spread, as you say, must be, must be contained, and I think we may have to come up with the municipal plan pretty soon, considering it's about 360 degrees around us at this point. I think we'd be foolish to think that it's not, gonna, it's not going to affect us. So, a plan, Mr. Mermis. Okay, that was the number one topic at the staff meeting on Wednesday. Okay, I just want to make sure we're on board with it. That's all I care about. All right, thanks, Alderman Wesley. Alderman, please. Uh, just to go back on... Uh and talking about going on the private property. So if I'm the landowner and I see that my tree is dying, I'm like, you know what? It's going to cost me a thousand bucks. I'll wait till the city comes in and tells me they're going to take it down. So I'll let them pay for it. Is that what we're looking for? No, no. In fact, and it's, it's even in the ordinance about how to, inf already written in here about how to enforce the removal of, of trees on private property. City starts by, to recap, and, and perhaps one of the staff members can clarify, but the city starts by, by issuing a rather urgent notice that, hey, we see your tree is diseased. You better get it out of there. you got this many days to do it. Now, if there's a financial hardship, I, there's a process involved, but, but we're, not, we're not taking it upon ourselves to pay for that removal. Uh, we're, we're saying, you know, it's your tree, it's your house. Okay. We're assuming you're making your, your monthly payments, and we're going to ask you to figure this one out, too. Alderman Coles. The caterpillars that are on the oak trees, what a, I think we called you, John, didn't we? My wife did. About the caterpillars. Correct. That was that's the ash. That isn't the ash tree. No, that was the gypsy moth. Gypsy moth. And the gypsy. I just want to let you know the gypsy moths are all around here now, and they're eating up the oak trees. So you got to be a little careful. And it's up to the citizens to look around because they can't they can't go all the time all around. And we noticed a lot of them came out of come out of the trees when we had that bad winter 
Then it stopped. They were all over the, over the street. And we called John. He, he came out and looked. So uh, our ash tree, we have an ash tree, and we check it all the time. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're very careful on stuff like that. Yeah, Alderman Coles, I too have heard some reports of gypsy moths, uh, particularly in your ward, because of yeah. the heavy concentration of oaks. Um, I don't know that you have to remove the tree if it has them. I think there's insecticidal uh, treatments that uh, get rid of the moths and have a good chance of saving the tree. Um, not really addressed in here, and I'm going to leave it up to John and staff if, if maybe there should be something in there about it. But yeah, it's a good point. Um, Alderman Winger, that's, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think the intent of preserving and protecting trees in Wooddale is good, particularly since we're called Wooddale. Uh, but this is a very aggressive ordinance. Uh, it's going to have substantial impact throughout the entire community. Um, just off the top, and I thought I'd never asked this question before in my life. Does this mean all trees in nonconformity are legal nonconforming? <laughs> and do they have amortization clauses and have to be removed within a period of time? This has substantial implications if this is adopted as is. I would have to think we would probably need uh, an attorney's uh, legal opinion on that. I mean, if, if I may, I mean, I think some simple language where if it's existing and, and uh, not uh, nuisance-oriented, you know, it should be able to remain. I think the intent of this is, you know, how do we deal with preserving what we have? Uh, how do we deal with uh, replanting? Um, and and maybe, maybe, Mr. Mayor, you're onto something, and we might want to not consider preserving the inappropriate species. Um, but I think, I think I know where you're going. I think you may be right. To read this to the letter uh, might might uh, not be what we're trying to do. Alderman Wesley. So my question is, I mean, obviously we're looking to vote on this tonight. Are we looking to, no? I, actually with everything that I talked about changing and getting some feedback on some issues but not on others, I think maybe I would ask staff, and I don't mean to no, take your, no completely take your committee away from you, Alderman Winger. Um, I, I would ask staff to come back with the changes I've asked, and if it looks good and there's no objections, then we go with that one. So I'm not looking to get go this tonight. To, it's going come to back, back to committee. committee. Thank you. Alderman, please. Yeah, I think we should check on some kind of legal, uh, as far as that uh, root breaking the uh, sewer pipe or water lines or whatnot, what... Uh, legal implications are in that because i'm not too excited about all of a sudden oh hey, it's the city your tree's killing my my plumbing you got to take care of it you know not only that but maybe john or if you or somebody else from your department might have some time to kind of you know uh get some some ghost uh proposals so to speak Talk to some of the plumbing uh, contractors that you know work in town. Get an idea what a typical uh, sleeving uh, might cost. Maybe I'm way off and it's completely out of our price range. I can do that and, and come back with a price. I mean, the thing that I've been thinking about is we've been talking about the tree roots damaging a sewer pipe. If it's an older clay kind of pipe uh, and the tree roots are plugging up the pipe, I mean, that's just a symptom of the pipe. If we cut the tree down and remove it, but that clay pipe is deteriorated to that point anyway, something's going to have to be done to replace or repair that pipe, regardless of whether the tree stays or goes. And that's almost would have to be a case by case. I mean, they have technology now where they can put the camera in the sewer line. They can locate exactly where the break is or where the, where the, uh, the roots are and determine what section of pipe is, is in poor repair. I mean, if it's found that it's a new sewer line and for some reason there are very aggressive roots and they've gotten into it, that case might need to be looked at differently than a piece of uh, clay sewer pipe that's 60 years old that's just deteriorating by age and the roots just happen to have found their way in there. So, yeah, I, I can get some prices on, on okay. what it would be. Okay, thank you. And, and let me just add one more thing, and I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but I think uh, if you're in a wooded area, 
And a couple times a year, you throw a couple bleach, a couple gallons of bleach down uh, your lowest sewer line in the house. Tree roots really don't want any part of that. That goes a long way. You'd be surprised how you, you know, as long as your as long as your clay pipes aren't completely ruptured, that that takes you, that gets you in between having to rot out by a couple of years easily. I know, I could say it works for me. So, Alderman, um, you over there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sam Alderman Lewitton. Well, I'm listening to this. It just seems like. Uh, what we're saying is that uh, one answer does not fit all questions mm -hmm. and I think that uh, from the exceptions that you gave and and the uh, exceptions that John Forrest gave especially the last one you know if you just if you cut down the tree to save the sewer but the sewer is already uh, destroyed and it would have been destroyed whether there was a tree there or not then that answer doesn't fit doesn't fit the question that you asked. And also, nobody's talked about the value of an aesthetic aged tree that might have another 50 years of life left in it. Because what would it cost to plant another tree 40 feet tall? And what I'm trying to say, and it comes down to this, is that one answer doesn't fit all the situations. So to give an ordinance that says, you must do this if this happens, is no good because it doesn't take into consideration all the reasons why this happens. And what's most important is to have a, uh, somebody in the city uh, services who can make a determination of what caused the problem and, and what the impact, the impact is of the, of the repair. And, take into consideration the the monetary value of a 40-foot tree and uh, John I gotta say I really love that example because it just proved it proved the whole whole thing I said that it, that one answer doesn't fit all questions so you got to have multiple ans you have multiple answers uh, thank you Alderman Lewitt and I, I agree and, and maybe there also needs to be some kind of a mission statement here too I mean what it is that council is, is trying to achieve and then how we how we balance it out I think Mr. Mermis has a response and then we're gonna go back yeah. to Alderman Winger I'm just looking for some staff direction um, I, I we've got about 10 points um, they kind of all are the same as far as loosening up the language um, so is that the direction to kind of work with these bullet points, loosen up the language, and then come back to committee for some further discussion with the new language based upon your bullet points. In some cases, loosen. I think maybe in some cases, tighten. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's what I'm hoping for at this point. And, and I'm going to give the floor back to Alderman Winger. Thank you, Alderman Kadala. And uh, my input or direction and... Uh, and 6.604 and other similar sections is that I feel it would be more clear if that type of dialogue was in the tree preservation ordinance. So, so we keep private property in one ordinance and parkway in the other. And in some cases, they may be similar, but at least if a resident or an attorney or whatnot is looking up different ordinances online, they'll know that they're in the right section when they're on private property tree preservation. And I believe we touch on uh, diseased trees as well in there, so, so we could just expand that out especially with issues like the emerald ash borer. So, so I do recognize the need for it, though. And uh, any other comments before we uh, wrap up this item? OK, then at this point, this item is for information and discussion only. And we'll look forward to that um, it, and items to be considered at future meetings. So I'm going to ask that. Uh, that be placed on items to be considered at future meetings. Also, items for future meetings, A, storm sewers detention ordinance revision, item B, grade separation, other safety alternatives endorsement, item C, emerald dash borer action plan, which is somewhat inclusive with our discussion with uh, that we just had. Item D, water consumption. Item E, along with item C, will be the uh, tree uh, preservation for, for parkways and um, and then also question before I call another alderman 
we had received the write-up on the uh, abandonment of wells on connection to city system. And is this something that we're going to talk about at a future discussion? Yeah, I just put that information in there because that was uh, the direct requested by Alderman Knipe. Um, and I think it would be more appropriate because it's such a large scale mm -hmm. issue that we talk about this maybe at a planning session before we bring it back to a committee level. Okay, certainly. But I wanted to give that immediate answer because he had asked that question. So I, can I be assured that we're following the standard protocol that we've always followed then where a resident that Annex is in has to cap their, their, their well and go into city water except for, I believe, one exception? Yeah, we're, unless they have a signed exception, we're not deviating from, from our codes. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Any other items for, for future meetings? Alderman, police. I think we should start um, figuring out what we're going to do with the alleys. Had a few complaints about alleys, and I've driven through some of them, and they're pretty bad. You were going to make it through? Yeah. So we better start thinking about what we're going to do with those alleys. Is that good? Okay. Uh, Alderman Wesley. Can I just ask one question? I don't know if it's... I've been getting a lot of phone calls with the mosquitoes being so invaded right now in, in the committee uh, because with all the rain and, and it's just out of control right now. Are, is there a set date yet for spring or is there not? I'm sorry. I just, oh, it's on, it, the date's on Monday. So they're going to spray the whole city on Monday? Yeah. Okay. Any other items for future meetings? Alderman Lewitton? Um, on the future meetings on the abandoned wells, uh, on abandonment of wells, I, I just want to make a public statement that I am opposed to making people abandon their wells at this time. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.